Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nello, the best platform around for business learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials on topics you might be interested in. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating a really interesting topic in corporate finance, that is, how to use statistical tests to detect potential fraud in accounting data. And uh, today we're going to investigate the so-called Benford law for first digit distribution and uh, how forensic accountants apply it to corporate books to potentially detect some manipulations in reporting. And you might be slightly familiar with this technique if you have watched a recent film with Ben Affleck that is called The Accountant, where a quant-savvy accountant or auditor played by Ben Affleck used a similar technique to detect fraud in the books he has been investigating. Without further ado, what's going to be our data? Well, just for a breath of fresh air, we would investigate the reported assets under management for over 11,000 various funds that are being traded on the US market. And uh, we will detect whether funds potentially exaggerate how much assets under management have they got. And Benford Law is very useful to test whether the data someone has reported to you has been meddled with in some way. To do that, first we need to consider what is the first digit of our assets under management as reported by the fund industry. To do that, we need to consider those reported figures as text first and apply a very useful text analysis function in Excel that is called left. The left function returns a number of uh, left symbols in a string of text. So if we refer to the B2 cell and um, say 1, so we want to return the first leftmost symbol of this string, it will return 7. But we need Excel to treat this 7 as a number later on, so to convert uh, a string value that is a number stored as text into a proper number, you just can add 0 to the formula and Excel will automatically assume that you want this data to be stored as a number, not as text. And then we need to bottom right click it all the way down and we'll get the first meaningful digit of every of the assets under management figures. So we see here we've got a seven, a couple of threes, a bunch of twos, um, a lot of ones, and then as we uh, breach uh, 100 million, we get to a bunch of nines, some eights, and so on and so forth. One of the important um, concepts here is that zero can't be a meaningful first digit. So if you would have something like 0 0.99 somewhere over here, for example, after we cross 1 million, you would have a fund that has uh, $900,000 uh, assets under management or something like that. You couldn't report zero as the meaningful digit. You would need to, for example, multiply all of your data by 1,000, and this fund would have a first meaningful digit of nine. That's something you need to do if for some of your inputs you have zeros as meaningful digits in the decimal representation they are reported in. But here we fortunately have none of those, so now we can uh, just figure out how many of each digit have we got. So to do that we just can apply the count if function to the range of digits and uh, lock the rows over here, as we don't want this array to change, and uh, refer to the cell where a particular digit is mentioned. So we'll count how many ones are there, how many twos are there, and so on and so forth. So we see that we have slightly above 3,500 ones, less twos, even less threes, and so on and so forth. 
and in total just to make sure that no zeros have entered the equation somewhere we have 11,504 uh, funds in total and that's indeed the case so we haven't missed anything out now we can uh, calculate the percentage so how many ones are there in percentage terms which share of funds have one as the first meaningful digit of their assets under management so we just need to divide how many ones are there by the total number of reported figures and lock the row here and we get 30 percent now we can drag this all the way to nine and then we can sum all of the percentages to make sure that we've got one over here and now we need to consider what the Benford law actually predicts would be the distribution of the first meaningful digits in our accounting data. The Benford law can be characterized by this simple formula, that the probability that the first digit is gonna be some number from one to nine here, D, is just the base 10 logarithm of one plus one over D. And uh, the nice and neat mathematical relationship here is that one plus one over D is d plus one divided by d so as we add all of the digits together and applying the property of the logarithm that log a plus log b equals log a b we would basically just collapse these multiplications of ratios to get base 10 logarithm of 10 over 1 and that would be equal to 1 so the sum of probabilities would converge to 1 and that's exactly what uh, we want to see with our probabilities and uh, basically what this formula suggests overall is that the probability of uh, lower digits appearing as the first meaningful digits of uh, uh, accounting data is higher than higher digits for example eights and nines appearing first uh, and this law is actually very much observable in all types of real-world data for example populations of cities areas of countries GDP of countries or uh, sales of various companies those types of data that are positively skewed and have higher means than medians all of those tend to be distributed according to Benford's law so let's figure out what are the percentages of uh, each significant digits appearing in the accounting data as per the Benford's law? So we just need to apply the log 10 function, which is a base 10 logarithm. And we need to input one plus one over the meaningful digit. And then we bottom mark it all the way down. Then we sum it all and uh, make sure that the predicted values of the sum of the probabilities do indeed equal one and here we see that actually the predicted values of the distribution of digits are, are very close to what we actually observe in funds assets under management data so how can we use the logic of the Benford's law and the comparison of Benford's law predicted distribution with the observed distribution to detect potential accounting manipulations or fraud well the first logic is relatively simple let's assume that a company generates a number at random it just lies and inputs or reports a random number as one of its uh, disclosure items then the first digits would be distributed uniformly across the whole spectrum so we would have like 11.11 .11 percent for uh, the first digit 11.11% for, for the second digit and so on and so forth and uh, comparing what we would have expected as per the Benford's law with this accounting data contaminated with randomly generated numbers when companies just report um, fabricated disclosure uh, we can be sure that we have noticed some anomalies another possibility is that companies might want to exaggerate their sales or production or profits let's assume that some car manufacturing company has manufactured 90,000 cars they might be tempted to report that they have actually manufactured 100,000 cars uh, according 
to this logic, it would mean that there would be fewer nines and eights and uh, overall numbers at the higher end of the spectrum reported and higher ones and twos and the numbers on the lower end of the spectrum reported as we would have expected uh, according to the Bamford's law. And we already can see that it's kind of the case. Uh, however, the discrepancy is relatively small. How can we apply formal statistical testing to determine what is the probability that our accounting data does indeed behave according to the Benford's law, so there is no uh, reason to assume that my, some manipulations or fraud might have happened? Well, the two most uh, common techniques that are used are the chi-squared test and the kolmogorov smirnov test. And we have got separate videos that discuss both tests uh, on their own on our channel, so please check those out if you are interested in analyzing them further. Here we'll just apply those two to our Benford's Law case study and derive the probabilities that the reporting in the fund industry of the assets under management figures does indeed behave according to the Benford's law and therefore we can assume it's indeed genuine. So to apply the chi-square test we need to calculate what would have we expected to see, how many uh, first digits of one would have we expected if the funds would indeed behave according to the Benford's law. To do that we need to multiply the total number of entries, the total number of funds in that case, by the expected probability according to the Benford's law. And here we can apply it to every single digit, sum them all up to make sure we haven't messed up anywhere, and then we can apply the chi-squared test as usual. We need to figure out the chi-squared statistics entry, which is the observed minus expected squared divided by the expected value. So observed, that is the observed frequency, minus what we would have expected as per the Benford's law, squared and divided by the expected occurrence. And then we can drag it all the way down and sum it all up to get our chi-squared statistic. So our chi-squared statistic here would be equal to 9.25 and to convert this into the p-value, so the probability that the reporting is genuine, we can apply the uh, right tilt chi-squared distribution and the number of the degrees of freedom would be the number of categories minus one. So in our case, as we have nine digits, the number of the degrees of freedom would be eight, so nine minus one. And we see that the p-value is 32.20%. It's a lot higher than the significance threshold of 10%, so as per the chi-squared stat, we cannot be uh, reasonably sure that there are any manipulations or fraud going on in this reporting. However, if you've got small samples, particularly, and if you investigate in a single company, for example, you would not be able to obtain a large sample of um, disclosed figures, so you would be talking about somewhere around 30 to 50 uh, observations uh, where you could extract significant first digits. Uh, in case of small samples, it has been proven that the chi-squared test has low statistical power, so a reasonable alternative to it, in case of small samples, would be the well-known kolmogorov smirnov test. Here, we just need to uh, calculate cumulative percentages up to a certain digit. So, as one is the lowest digit we have, he would just copy those probabilities around, but each next digit we would just calculate the cumulative percentages. So add in the percentages to the previous values. So 48.11% of digits in total are ones and twos, and we would have expected 47.71% of all first digits to be ones or twos. And then we can drag it all the way down and get to 100% because uh, all of the digits are obviously from 1 to 9 because we use the decimal system. Here we can calculate the supremum just as we are used to, so the maximum absolute deviation of the observed, so empirical distribution, from the theoretical distribution of the cumulative probabilities as per the Benford's law. And we can enforce this formula using shift control enter and get a supremum of 0.58%.
And now we can apply the usual formula for the p-value of the kolmogorov smirnov test, so the exponent of minus supremum squared times the number of observations, which is 11,504. And enforcing this formula, we get 67.57%. So the kolmogorov smirnov test gives us an even higher probability that the reporting is genuine, that the uh, di digits, that the first significant digits of reported assets under management do indeed abide by the Benford's law, so there is nothing to worry about uh, regarding accounting manipulation or fraud in the fund industry, um, at least regarding assets under management figures. So Benford's law is a very powerful tool that can predict how first significant digits of various types of economic, financial, and accounting data can be distributed. And in accounting practice and forensic accounting, it's even used to inform suspicions regarding accounting manipulation or fraudulent behavior even. That's all there is for Benford's law and its applications in corporate finance and forensic accounting. Please do subscribe to our channel if you found this video helpful. In the comments below, I am eager to read any suggestions for future videos on business, economics, or finance you would like me to record. And please leave a like under this video. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.